Hi everyone, my name is Sahana Devakumar. I'm a medical student currently in my final year of medicine in India. I gave my USMD Step 1 exam in September, on September 2020 and I scored a 250 plus. So if you want to know my resources, my timeline, some extra helpful tidbits and just if you're here for some motivation, I think you're in the right place. So let's get started. Firstly, I think the most important thing is belief and willpower that you believe you can do it. This exam is not as hard as people make out it make it out to be. It's meant for second years or studying in the US and it's meant for them to be able to clear it. It is a tough exam. It's going to be challenging, but it's not impossible. And just remind yourself that this exam is made for second years to pass. And if you're like an I, if you're an IMG like me and you've finished all your years of medicine, then you definitely can do this and you can get a fantastic score and I'm gonna tell you how. Okay, firstly my timeline. Uh, I took five months approximately to clear my step one. I started my prep on in May 2020 and my exam date is on 19th September 2020. I divide my prep into three phases. Firstly, it's pre-dedicated, dedicated, and the last one week. And my resources, the way I approached these phases were all different. And that's why they've been divided like that. Technically, I was not working in those five months. So the entire five months was a dedicated period, but I call it pre-dedicated because this was before I started really focusing on problem solving. So you can also classify it as uh, acquiring knowledge, like my learning period, and then my practice period, and then the last one week. And I'll get to it later why the last one week is not the same as the rest of your prep time. And there are some extra things which can help you have an edge over other people if you prepare the right way. Coming to resources, I'll also talk talk about them as in as I divide my timeline. Pre-dedicated resources, my basic, that's your skeletal resources which you're going to depend your entire prep on was UWorld, First Aid, Boards and Beyond, and Sketchy. Uh, since I'd already watched Pathoma videos in my second year of medicine, I didn't re-watch all of them. I only watched them in my dedicated period when I got a question wrong or needed to strengthen my concepts in a particular topic. But if you haven't watched them, I'd add this to your skeletal base also. As you can see, this is an overview of all the resources I used along with my timeline. Uh, in the pre-dedicated period, which is a concept building period, I used UWorld, First Aid, BNB, Sketchy, and Pathoma, depending on your familiarity with it, and my supplementary videos, which I will get to it in a later section. Uh, in my dedicated, I didn't ignore my foundation material, but I, along with the foundation material, I used, I learned that material along with doing questions mostly. So in my dedicated period, it was mostly doing questions and referring back to the material which I had used in my pre-dedicated to strengthen my concepts. Into my question banks, so I used UWorld, uh, NBMEs, and I used the one week period of free AMBOSS questions because I didn't really feel that I would be learning much from the AMBOSS question and it was close, getting closer to my exam date. So I kind of just skipped it and went with redoing my UWorld wrong questions. So let, I'll break it down as to how I used each of these resources. Uh, firstly, UWorld, that is the best resource for all things step one, and it currently stands undefeated. So in my pre-dedicated period, what I did was I'd watch a particular topic of Boards and Beyond. So if it was cardiology, I'd watch cardiology of Boards and Beyond, read my first state along with the cardiology series, and annotate anything that I think needs to be explained in my first day. Throughout that period, I would start doing my cardiology questions from UWorld. And I would get through as many as possible in the time period that I would finish my cardiology from Boards and Beyond. So that way I was learning the information and learning how to apply the information at the same time. So when I did what this gave me like an edge over, I think, and helped me save time was the way I was storing the information was the right way or the way the board wants you to store information. So I would solve a question so I know, okay, this is the information which I need to store, but this is how I need to store it. So that really helped. 
वर्ल्ड आई डिड इट वन एंड टू वन एंड क्वार्टर टाइम्स आई थिंक सो आई फिनिश इट ऑल ऑल द क्वेश्चन वंस एंड देन आई डिड माई मिस्टेक्स एंड मार्क क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आई वेंट थ्रू अबाउट सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ दैम आई वॉज अ लिटिल वरीड बिकॉज एवरीबडी सेड यू डू इट ट्वाइस यू डू इट ट्वाइस बट आई कैंड ऑफ फेल लाइक आई एक्सट्रैक्टेड एज मच एज आई कुड फ्रॉम इट इन माई फर्स्ट पास इन माई डेडिकेटेड आई I was kind of short of time and I had a lot of questions left so I just whizzed through all the questions in I tried to finish all the questions in subject wise and if I the last I think 300 or 400 questions I kind of finished it in random I find it easier to do it subject wise because reviewing gets easier so when you're reviewing the UOL question bank what I do is uh I'll go through all the questions if I got a question wrong and that's not because of a silly mistake or if it's a completely new concept either of these two things i let it go but if it's a, something which i knew but i didn't really understand fully or i forgot i would open the first date or the resource i studied it from so i'll give you an example right now suppose i solved a question on as and i got it wrong and but i and i studied as from first aid and boards and beyond so i would quickly go to first aid reread the as part watch the boards and beyond video maybe on murmurs solidify the information in my brain that way i won't miss a question of the same nature again on test day so that's how i reviewed my questions from you world then comes to my nbmes uh, i'll put up a list of the nbmes and my scores and the order i took them in here you can see my nbme scores i started off with nbme 16 where i scored at 236 so i used this as my baseline which was 10 weeks out uh you can see in the left side left hand side column i've written the number of weeks from my uh, exam date where i've taken the um, nbmes so what i realized which actually helped me improve my score as you can see by almost 20 points from my baseline was i started doing the nbmes in a non timed fashion so i started doing the earlier ones just doing each block with as much as time as i could take and doing each question properly so i realized that once i did that my silly mistakes reduced so my problem wasn't really with conceptual understanding but with making silly mistakes and rushing through questions so when i started doing them in a timed fashion towards the later half of my prep my score still remained in the 250s because i gave each question enough amount of time uh, arman malik is a youtuber and you guys have to follow him he saved my life i'm going to link him below he has made nbme explanations for almost all of them i don't know if it's still up but i hope it is and those videos are extensive they are long but if you have the time put them on 2x and just watch all of them cuz that's how you maximize learning from question banks and those nbmes i i swear i saw two three direct questions in my in my uh, real exam then coming to additional resources so this is where things get interesting and little personalized i feel so additional resources are things which you just know you use when you are you're comfortable with for me example i use ninja nerd a lot and i use osmosis those things i was familiar with from my ug days i use my robins textbook whenever i need to refer anything cuz i was comfortable with it so i'm going to put a list of additional resources that i think everyone should use for certain topics for example i think immunology from armando and ninja nerd was everything i needed to know like boards and beyond wasn't sufficient and when i combined these two resources they just completed my understanding of immunology completely so like that i have some personal favorites which i go to even now and i'll just send put up a picture and you guys can take a screenshot um the last week i only revised my um uh, first aid so i just kept going through my first aid again and again there are some tables which are just so hard to like this is so hard to commit to memory like the neurofibromatosis table the table for the uh, tumor sub tumor uh, suppressors and tumor um, uh, oncogenes and proto oncogenes they are incredibly tough and don't beat yourself up but just keep revising those things which you know are just rote memorizing and that will help you in your last week 
and one more thing which i did in my last week was watch dirty medicine so i know i knew of i knew of dirty medicine but i didn't really use it during my prep but i think it's meant to be used last minute so he gives you like these amazing mnemonics for things which they just don't make any sense and they just have to be committed to memory but in a way that you'll never forget it so i suggest everybody in the last week to go through almost all of dirty medicines videos i'll leave the link down below he is fantastic and i'm sure i got a couple of those uh p450 inducer suppressors and i know i only remember it because of him then last week prep also includes statistics so some of if you're not really great in math and you don't know how these formulas are derived then you need to learn the formulas or at least make a cheat sheet so the last week is meant to make your cheat sheet once you go and sit down in your exam if you think these are things that you definitely will forget then write them down but practice writing them down so what i would do is when i was going to take an nbme i would rewrite my cheat sheet and i would keep it right next to me and give the test so on exam day even though i didn't really need it because i had written it so many times i had committed to memory uh i think it helped me like just be more calm regarding the fact that these things i know i'm weak at but now it's already in my memory because of just repeated writing and rewriting it this big a uh, big topic that i think a lot of people don't talk about is exam anxiety um i'm going to be honest here i had a lot of exam anxiety and for the last two weeks before my exam i was taking like a very small dose of uh, non benzodiazepine sedatives like zolpidem uh, it was a very minor dose but i think it kind of helped me get used to the drug and also reduce my like i had a lot of sleep anxiety so i kind of brought it down so i didn't find any youtubers or anybody who spoke about this and all i had was a couple of experiences from reddit suggesting don't sleep at all it's fine it's okay just take benzos just it's fine don't worry exercise exercise basically what i found is do what's good for you if you can't sleep the night before the exam it's okay your brain can still function there's just pure adrenaline during your test time and you will it will push you through your brain will definitely push you through don't put pressure on it if you can sleep great get a good night's sleep i could only sleep for around 2 hours before my exam despite taking a benzodiazepine but i didn't want to take any more because i think that could affect your cognitive ability the next day so i just stared at the wall waited for the sun to come up and went and gave my exam so on test day uh, i clearly didn't sleep i woke up my mom had packed my food for me i had read up online that you always pack food which is high in protein less in carbs it will decrease at postprandial rise in sugar so i packed a lot of protein bars chicken nuggets one cup of coffee one red bull which is like an emergency sos drink which i had uh, lemon juice because i think lemon is very like um, sour so it kind of wakes you up even if you're trying to like maybe you're not really alert during the exam and i had a sandwich i know it's elaborate but i took all of this to my exam center and on the day of the test this was during post the first phase of lockdown so i went to the test we all had to wear our mask throughout the entire duration of the test they checked our uh, documents the documents um and they checked our fingerprints i was guided to my exam my computer one like crazy thing that happened was my computer just hung in the middle and just shut down and i panic i thought my test it was taking away my time and oh my god what am i going to do but then the test center the test center uh, manager just came he calmed me down he said don't worry just go stand in that corner i'll get your computer up, up and running again and then it was and the time hadn't stopped and it just continued from where i had left off so coming to the most important part of this video my score so i scored a uh, 256 on my usme step 1 uh I'm going to be honest I thought I'd get a 260 and I was initially kind of disappointed for the first 5 seconds and then I kind of snapped back into reality and I'm like who am I kidding that's a great score I want to pursue internal medicine and I think that is a competitive enough score for my specialty of choice
so that's about it that's my usmle step one experience if you have any doubts just leave them in the comments below and i'll get back to all of you um, my instagram handle is sahana.deva please go follow me if you want to see me give out some more step one advice or actually just watch me dance because uh, i love to dance <laughs> and just like scare share and subscribe to my channel i'll be posting videos regarding us assembly medicine how i approach studying how i store information using mind maps so keep watching guys bye